The Hat Man. Reports state that one can only experience the bone-chilling presence of the Hat Man after taking a large amount of Benadryl. As of recently, it has been discovered that no one is safe. It doesn't matter how sober or zooted you may be, the Hat Man is watching and you may see him lurking in the shadows. I want you to imagine that you are sleeping in bed and are awoken by the sound of something falling off your wooden dresser across the room. You open your eyes only to see a dark figure appearing to wear a trench coat and having a fedora style hat on. You blink several times but the image is still ever present. In that moment you try to sit up but realize you are experiencing sleep paralysis. As you continuously blink your eyes, the figure gets closer and closer to you. He whispers in your ear, I am the hat man. You wake up the next day and chalk up the previous experience as having a weird nightmare. Going on to Reddit, you remember what the entity said to you, I am the hat man. Your nightmare becomes a harsh reality as you see that hundreds of thousands of people have all experienced this same phenomenon. A person had even edited a photo showing the figure they witnessed and you see the exact same entity that was in your room the night before. The idea of the hat man is far from a crime, but earlier this year there was a TikTok trend where people basically glamorized the hat man saying that if you take X amount of Benadryls you will see the hat man and it's just an experience you don't want to miss out. As stated previously, the hat man is seen wearing a black trench coat and also wears a black fedora hat. Several TikTokers were sharing their experiences saying that they took X amount of Benadryl pills, they tripped and saw the hat man, and that encouraged others to do the same thing thinking that it was safe. Benadryl pills are basically something you take the night before if you want to pass out and get good sleep because you've been sick, or if you've had really bad allergies or flu-like symptoms. Basically, if you have any of those, you just want to take a Benadryl pill and it usually clears it up the next day. They are also very obtainable as they are in basically every store you could think of, Walgreens, Walmart, etc. That is why this trend became extremely dangerous. The sole purpose of this video is to not only educate you on the believed hat man, dangers of taking too much Benadryl and people's stories, but honestly to convince you to never ever try this trend. Not only could you severely harm your body with long term everlasting effects, but you could go as far as unalive yourself. I have to censor these videos to abide by the community guidelines. I don't want to say them, but I have to censor myself. I'm no health specialist, so everything we are talking about today is going to be alleged. This is my perspective on all of the information that I have obtained. The recommended dose is one to two pills and that is the only dose I will recommend you take if you are feeling sick. I strongly recommend you to not go above the recommended usage, but let's dive in. The first level is the therapeutic level, which goes from 25 to 100 milligrams, about one to four Benadryl pills, probably just going to make you sleepy and cure your allergies temporarily. If you can stay up at the higher end, you might get a tiny bit of a body high and mental slowdown, kind of like being on a benzo. Not really worth it unless you just want to sleep. 25 to 50 milligrams can potentiate opioids as well. Level one, 100 to 200 milligrams, equivalent to four to eight Benadryl pills. This is known as a FAP dose. There might be slight music enhancement and you'll get a bit of a DPH body heaviness, but most people take this amount so their orgasms are enhanced. I really don't recommend doing anything sexual on DPH though. There's several Arrowhead reports of people having some degree of sexual dysfunction after doing this a few times, with one notable of a 20 year old developing full on erectile dysfunction as a near total loss of penis function after abusing DPH for a year. This is probably due to DPH's vasoconstrictive properties. Level 2 200 to 300 milligrams, equivalent to 8 to 12 Benadryl pills. This is probably the best range to use if you don't want full-blown delirium. Music sounds great, your mouth is going to be so effing dry, and you're going to piss a lot. However, for a lot of people, they are unable to urinate on DPH, or it at least becomes very difficult. Your body feels like it weighs a thousand pounds, but surprisingly, I don't fall asleep or even feel sleepy at this level. You might start seeing slight movement in the corner of your eyes or occasionally see a spider where there is no spider. 
You'll probably experience auditory hallucinations like a family member calling your name from the distance or faint footsteps outside your door. Mentally, your short-term memory is going to start to go to hell and you won't be able to keep a thought going very long which for me are usually short, nonsensical, and very abstract visions which usually are influenced by the music I'm listening to. Level 2 continued 300 to 500 milligrams which is equivalent to 12 to 20 Benadryl pills. This is the dosage level between the high I described above and full-blown delirium. The positive effects will get a bit stronger, especially the confusion, but in my experience and many other delvers, the negative effects get much worse, far outweighing the positives. Hallucinations, especially auditory, become much more common, but you still have some ability to differentiate them from reality. Your perfect dosage may be somewhere in this level, especially if you are a larger person, but for most people, this is a shitty dosage. Level 3 slash delirium. 500 to 700 milligrams, equivalent to 20 to 28 pills. Delirium begins to set in, especially past 600 milligrams, and it is almost guaranteed at 700 milligrams for most people, hence the 700 club. You will probably forget you took anything and will have full-blown lifelike hallucinations. Your parents or the police might come in and harass you for taking drugs. You'll see spiders or snakes all over the place. You might text your friend or grab a remote to change the channel and then see your phone slash remote evaporate immediately. Your friends will probably come over and hang out with you for a little bit, probably telling you about very strange twisted things. Phantom cigarettes are quite an enjoyable smoke at this dose. Level 4, 700 to 1200 milligrams, equivalent to 28 to 48 pills. See above. As you dose higher, the trip will get progressively stronger and last longer. Some level of HPPD, at least for the next few days. As you dose higher, the trip will get progressively stronger and last longer. Some levels of HPPD, at least for the next few days, is pretty much guaranteed at the higher levels, 1 gram. If you have even the slightest care about your health, this is as high as you should go. A trip sitter is strongly recommended. Aerial, 1.2 grams to 2 grams. Psychedelics have hyperspace disassociatives have holes, delirians have aerial. Please educate me if I'm mispronouncing this word. I've tried several different sayings. I'm not sure if it's aerial or ariel. I don't know, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Aerial is characterized by almost complete disconnection from reality. Often people at this level will spend hours walking around, talking to people, swatting phantom bugs, then blink, and realize they've just been sitting in one spot, and everything that just occurred was a fantasy. Hallucinations at this level tend to become hellish, with disturbing, often violent imagery commonly occurring. You may genuinely develop PTSD if you survive a dose of this size. Shadow people including the hat man are almost always present as well. This level is objectively terrible for your mental and physical health. Seizures are not uncommon and a high risk of death or serious health complications including stroke and heart attack is present above 1.5 grams. After that stage that's as high as you can go because any further it's pretty much guaranteed death. Surprisingly I was able to find a story where a person took 1800 milligrams of Benadryl and survived. Keep in mind 1800 milligrams is equivalent to 72 pills, which is well into Ariel. This is their story. Cedric Library, 1800 milligrams DPH, downed 1800 milligrams DPH a few minutes ago. Before you ask, I'm not trying to be a hero, but I do wish to get as close to death as possible. Doors are locked, phone is off, wish me luck. Let's see how this goes, shall we? Other poster, quote, or just having tea with death. Tea with death is what I'm aiming for. Typing this took me way longer than it should have. Not sure if I'll be able to post later on. Trip report will be here. If I stay alive, that is. A few posts later. I weigh 162 pounds. The keyboard is breathing and I can't hear anything. Still later. Am I actually typing this? Holy I'm alive. I've never appreciated that fact more than I do now. F Still having some visual distortions, am feeling sick, but mostly down now. Before I start the trip report, I should warn you kids not to do this much DPH no matter what. 
I did it, I've seen it, you don't have to follow my stupidity, you don't want to go there, trust me. So about 30 minutes after taking the pills, I started feeling heavy, the feeling was getting increasingly stronger, I tried my best to keep my mind blank, but failed and started freaking out after gaining approximately 400 pounds, and having my ears ring so badly I couldn't hear anything else, including my own voice when I tried talking. Then, for a short moment, my vision went black and white, then flashed back to normal again. After this, the ringing began to go away, and after it was gone, the visuals kicked in. Hardcore. First thing I remember, my ceiling, walls, and floor were melting, and I was being pulled down by an enormous force. However, moving wasn't too difficult after a bit of trying. Every shadow in my room was crawling with insects, apart from a big juicy taco right above my head. There was a cluster of centipedes on the floor and some of them were running around the table. They wouldn't go down when touched. The longer I stared, the more of them would appear, until I wasn't in my room anymore. Everything around me was moving, living mass. I don't remember what else happened in the stage or how did I escape it, but after it went away, some inanimate objects appeared to be breathing and I was afraid to touch them. Example, the keys on the keyboard. I had an extremely dry mouth so I got up and went to get myself a glass of water. It didn't help much but I drank a lot anyway. After finishing the third glass I heard music coming from the other room so I went there to check it out. First thing I noticed there was a human sized creature standing in the corner. I assumed it was a doll. It would lose its parts, arms, legs, head from time to time but as soon as I looked away and looked back again it was whole again. I was afraid to touch it because I was sure it would hurt me. The doll stayed in that corner disassembling and assembling itself again and again during this whole stage of the trip. Second thing I noticed, there was a man dressed in black, his head buried in the shadows, sitting on the sofa and several other people slash creatures wandering around, then fading later. Not all of them went away though, some shadow figures got more human-like in time and I had some conversations with who I thought were my friends. Everything was extremely realistic, I could touch, hear, and smell them, but after a while most of them went away, but the dark man on the sofa stayed where he was. So I went up to him and sat down as well. I couldn't see his face, but didn't pay much attention then. I believe this, my friends, was the hat man himself. All the interaction we had was a handshake and a bit of talking. I said hi to him and he said hello, Cedric. Then I asked if I was going to die. He was quiet for a while, then said, don't go to Ariel. After those words, there was a sudden flash of light and I found myself standing in the kitchen with a broken glass on the floor. I went to check the room I was meant to be at, nothing was there. Suddenly I felt that the message I got was very important and I had to tell others. So I went back to the room, to my computer, and tried to post the phrase on this trend, only to find out I was standing at the other side of the room, facing the wall later. Then I would go back to the computer and repeat what I did, but it would always end the same. I was stuck in a loop. This was extremely terrifying. I think nothing during this trip scared me as much as the thought of being stuck in that loop forever. After this repeated about six times, I sent am I actually typing this, which surprisingly got through. I was extremely relieved. Then another flash followed and I would hear people knocking at my door. I would go and let them in. We talked, then one of the guests turned out to be my father, which is dead. I repeat, everything I saw and heard was extremely realistic and I took it as reality. I was paralyzed by horror for a moment when I realized I was dead. It was so clear now. I took too much DPH, too much to come back from where it took me. I asked my father if I was dead. He said no. Then I asked how can I be here with him. He then answered, if you can be, you are not dead. We mostly just sat together quietly ignoring the others. They were going on with their own conversations. When a young, dark-haired man came up to me and offered me a cigarette, I took it and smoked for a bit. It would always become a new, freshly lit one after taking my attention off of it for a while. Suddenly, the room went silent. I looked around to see what was up. Everyone was gone. My room window was covered with moths now. I figured the people in my room were those moths from the very beginning. After yet another flash, I was laying on my floor with a Sahara desert for a mouth and a mild headache. I managed to go and lay down on the bed. There were many blackouts from this point. Basically all I can remember are whispers, don't go to Ariel, repeating from time to time. I realized I was the only one saying that. Tacos crawling on my sheets in visual distortion of the room. My thoughts wouldn't stop bothering me. I thought I could hear screaming, I felt heavy and sick. I probably fell asleep at some point, but I have no clue what I did beforehand because there are just way too many gaps and no one to tell the story from a different angle. My faith in humanity equals completely restored. 
I cannot express how terrifying of an experience that must have been. I totally can see where the physical signs of PTSD can arise after having such a bad trip. The idea of the hat man really interests me and from this point I kind of view the hat man as a symbolism of death. Wearing all black, you know, trench coat, black fedora hat, just kind of like the mysterious head down, doesn't really talk much shakes hand polite it just it seems very much so like he is the apparition of what death would be like now that we have how many pills lead to what high and stories of people who have actually gone to ariel let me also fully disclose that i do not recommend any of you to do this trend i strongly suggest that you do not do it especially because there are so many negatives and very few positives we will be talking about the tiktok trend and how it turned to a deadly story in early 2023 the idea of the hat man became a very popular topic that several people were talking about and sharing stories on how they had experienced this creepy entity while many people had seen the hat man while being completely sober others were glamorizing the times they got high off benadryl and saw the unknown entity in april of this year 13 year old jacob stevens had taken a large amount of benadryl with his friends as they were participating in this challenge and they caused him to be on a ventilator for a week and he eventually passed away. Since his passing, his grandmother has been very open to public and talking to several news outlets to make sure no child should ever participate in this disgusting challenge. CNN did reach out to TikTok for a comment on this trend and they replied, quote, Our deepest sympathies go out to the family. At TikTok, we strictly prohibit and remove content that promotes dangerous behavior with the safety of our community as a priority. We have never seen this type of content trend on our platform and have blocked searches for years to help discourage copycat behavior. Our team of 40,000 safety professionals work to remove violations of our community guidelines and we encourage our community to report any content or accounts they're concerned about. I want to play both sides with this statement. Number one, it's the tipment from a large corporation where they express their deepest condolences for something that could have easily been prevented. At the same time, yes, they do have 40,000 employees that are allegedly removing content every single day. But at the same time, there is so much content being posted that I think it's still humanly possible for all of those people to be viewing that content and not missing some videos. On the other hand, this was a trend End, which means that there are multiple videos so you think that if one of those 40,000 people had saw the video and thought hey this is a pretty bad video and there's a hashtag that says hashtag Benadryl challenge if they would have clicked the hashtag they would have seen the trend which would have led them to take down the entire thing and could have potentially saved Jacob's life overall the trend was taken down but unfortunately the trend did cause the loss of 13 year old Jacob Stevens you won't see any more videos regarding to this trend as TikTok did do it pretty good job at deleting everything. We've talked about a story of a person being completely zooted out of their mind and saw the hat man. Now let's talk about a story of someone who is 100% sober. And I'm gonna be honest, the story is very weird, but I feel that there are a lot of similarities in each of these stories, minus one of them is tripping and the other one is not. This story is from the hatmanproject.com, which is a website created by someone who has been extremely impacted by the hat man. The sole purpose of this website is to share information and personal testimonies of the hat man there are multiple stories so if you want to read them yourself click the link in my description but i did pick one of them that is titled the hat man created my monster My husband and I were in a long hallway waiting for test results for my baby who I just gave birth to. He was very sick. I was sitting down on a bench outside the room. The testing was being done. A very tall, dark figure with a tall black hat and cape walked by us in broad daylight. No one else seemed to notice it as they didn't react to it. I thought he was the angel of death, so I told my husband not to look, fearing if we looked, whatever it was thinking of bestowing upon our son would happen. We did look out of the corner of our eyes it passed through the doorway of the room the technician was looking at the results and getting them ready for us the tech who did the test came out but didn't seem bothered in the slightest and never mentioned seeing it i couldn't believe it 
I jumped up and asked her if she'd seen anything while in the room just now, but she misunderstood and said, quote, I'll tell you one thing, he won't see his bar mitzvah. He has no critical organs. I went back to my son's room totally wrecked. She was so cold and careless in that way she delivered the news about my son. No vital organs. My husband pulled me out of the chair and said, let's go. You're going for a walk outside for some air. I was in a daze, bouncing between what we've just seen and what we just heard. My husband was speaking to me, but it sounded far away, and I couldn't recall anything he said. As I looked around at the beautiful spring day around us that seemed to mock my pain, everything looked so vivid. The trees, the clouds, the sky. I even walked right into a tree because I was looking up in that tree. A cross was carved. I've never been religious. My husband said to take it as a sign of hope that our son might turn out to be okay after all. I wish that had been true. We went back to the hospital. The doctors told us he did have his critical organs, but he had a terminal lung and liver disease. They gave him a life expectancy of about 40 years old. We thanked God for the time we thought we wouldn't have and went home with our son after a few weeks. He was a beautiful baby. I wish he had stayed that way. It started out with small things he would do around the house. Kids do things so we didn't pay much attention at first. Then he started hurting his brother and sister, then the animals. We spanked him, got him into treatments and counseling, did the whole thing, but he was diagnosed as a psychopath at the age of 19. He has caused major suffering for all of our family to the point that we had him hospitalized for a time. Eventually, he left and got into drugs, violence, and jail. I don't know why, but I believe the devil put his mark on him that day. I think my son was supposed to die, but the devil had work for him. God forgive us. We should have let him die. I've personally have never seen the hat man, but also this is not just like a one fluke story. There have been thousands of stories from this website and also on Reddit where people have seen the alleged hat man either being completely zooted or 100% sober. I want you to comment your thoughts on the hat man and tell me what you believe the true identity of the hat man is. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want you to know that the next episode is probably going to be a little longer than next next Sunday. I have a lot of moving parts, but let me tell you, this is an episode that you will not want to miss. So if you want to stay updated, follow me on Instagram, Crime Brought to Light. I will be posting updates there if next, next Sunday I find that I don't have a video yet. Just know that there will be one then. Another thing to comment down below is a story you would like me to talk about. It's spooky season. I love talking about stories and nine times out of ten, a spooky story and a crime usually go two and two together. Like this is a scary story, but there's also crime involved with the hat man. Without further ado, I will see you guys next, next Sunday, but if not, I'll let you know. Stay safe.